<laughs> All right. So I'm going to run uh, some bugs in this code and then show you what to do about them. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right. So I have a, a notebook here, and it has a bunch of bugs in it. And then we're going to walk through, like, what is the notebook trying to tell you about the bug? So the, the jargon here is that you have a thing called a traceback. It's those pink little windows you're all familiar with from your code. That was a joke. <laughs> So it's trying to tell you where the error is. Obviously, here in the first cell, since we haven't defined the variable A, it's telling us that variable is not defined. So that's a super, that's, you won't get any more clear, right? It's telling you exactly what the problem is and where it is. Those are the best type of trace specs because you understand that's what I should fix, right? I'm going to walk through this notebook, and you'll see, like, that's not always the case. All right. So often, you'll make little... Python inconsistencies, right? So we know that a function, when we define it, needs to have a semicolon after it, or a colon, rather. And that would be, to, to fix the error, we just make it an actual Python code. So that's pretty straightforward. Those are also very simple to fix. I'm going to leave that there. All right. And then the problem is that I don't like as much. Python tries to find a problem. But then it reports to you the wrong line of the code. All right, so here I have a function definition, and then it's complaining about this return statement indentation doesn't match. That's, that's misleading at best, right? Because it's not actually the error that is causing the problem. All right, so the, uh, the errors that are present are the fact that it's missing a sem uh, colon, and the indentation is not consistent. But all the traceback can tell you is what's the last error that it sort of encountered in this profiling of all the problems. Well, this cell. Yeah, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know how the pro, uh, how the interpreter works exactly at that level, but yeah, it's not basically the takeaway message here is it's not always going to tell you where the actual bug is, and so the usual like if you see something that you're super confident like this return statement, there's nothing wrong with it. I can guarantee that. So then my default action is I look at the line above. Is there anything wrong wrong there? And I basically work my way up and say are there are there bugs or differences in the code above where it's reporting the error. That's the, the next natural place to look when Python's reporting an error. All right, so I'll make a list, and then we'll try and, so this, this bug I'm gonna introduce to you, that's not Python's fault. That's your fault, right? You're trying to access the element of a list that doesn't exist. Python's like, I don't even know where you're talking about. All right, so again, that's not something that Python can fix. That's a programmer issue. So it's like the worst they're, the worst bugs are not Python's fault they're your fault. Good news is if you want if you sort of like anticipate oh, someone could do something stupid at this point a natural thing to use is the try accept pattern. So this is I want to try a thing but if it fails do this. All right, so in this case I'm handling the error by saying hey user there's an issue here. All right, so that's that's the way of trying something that you think may have some issues, and then if that doesn't work, here's a way of catching the error. So when you write these try accept statements, the important thing is you need to know what type of error you're going to encounter. And you don't always, and you can handle the generic case, but it's always best to handle, if you think it's going to be an index error, then catch the index error in your, in your try accept statement. So here, I happen to know that I'm going to probably run into an, ex, an index error, because someone's going to put a silly number in there, and therefore I'm going to catch that. What that leaves you with, if someone else introduces an error that you weren't looking for, then it won't catch that, and it will just break your program. So it's best to be as narrowly focused on what type of errors you think are going to happen rather than trying to catch the generic error. All right. All that was very simple because I introduced a, a bug within, like, two lines of code. And more often, you are writing many lines of code and your bug is going to look something a little bit more complicated. So typically, you'll have a function that relies on another function or a module that depends on another module. And that's where the traceback functions get real fun to read. 
look at how much extra trace back we have to parse through, right? Like we have to go now trace back and figure out what is going on here. And so as usual, start at the bottom and work your way up. Python's trying to tell you what functions called what in order to figure out where the error might be. All right, so let's look at our original code here. So I have a function which takes a list and then prints the fifth element, or returns the fifth element, sorry. And then I have um, another function which takes two arguments and then calls our first function, passing the list that was passed in as an argument and returns a value. So pretty complicated code, right? It's two nested functions. Um, so the traceback error, so we can figure out what the error is here. So it, it tried to access the, that list element that doesn't exist. And so it's telling us that pretty directly. Um, and it's telling you how it got there from the original call. OK. All right. So then usually what I'll do is I'll try and like the way I debug code when I'm not exactly sure what's going on is I'll insert a bunch of extra print statements. And the print statements tell me where in the code am I executing right now. And so that's the way that I debug the execution flow rather than trying to do the opposite path, which is using the traceback to go backwards. So you can go in both directions in your code, the way that your program is being executed and the way that the, ex that the bug was triggered. Those are two different routes to get to the same place. OK. Mm, let's see. Then I can be really fancy. I can, now that I know where I think my bug is, I can put in my try accept statement, and everything's happy. All right. So there I didn't get that trace back, but my program didn't actually complete the way I wanted, but at least it didn't you know, break. OK. Uh, this last bit here is basically about types and type checking. This is the other thing that you'll probably run into for bugs is you're expecting a string, and someone passes you a dictionary. Sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't, right? And so if you're looking for the first element of a dictionary and the first element of a string, you may get something back, but it won't be the thing you expect. So usually in Python, we try and figure out, um, we try and write functions that don't depend on data types. Um, but sometimes you're in the situation and you need to use a is instance. So that's the takeaway here. OK. I think that's all I want to deliver there. Uh, yeah. And then the 